Hey, welcome back to the channel today. One of the things that I wanted to do was talk about a few things in my book that have, I've had questions about. And by the way, I'm very excited to announce that this book on Amazon this year was ranked as the number one bestseller in golf books. So thank you all of you that have purchased the book and all of you who keep supporting the single plane swing. One of the things that I did with this book, which you may or may not know, is I kept it pretty non-technical. But what I did was I put things in the book that talk about the feelings of the swing. And one of the things that I find really important about instruction is that you actually have things you can apply and do so you can learn the feelings of the swing. This book is really all about feelings. It may be the only golf book out there that really deal, deals more with the feelings of the swing and how to learn them so you learn the single plane swing. Today I want to talk about what I have on page 124, which is the lead knee position keeping it flexed. So if you have a chance, take a look at this in your book. I'm going to review it today. Thanks for joining my channel and let's get with it and talk about the lead knee position. So there's no better feeling knowing that when you wake up in the morning to go play golf, so that you're going to play well. There's no better feeling of hitting good golf shots down the fairway. So my mission today is to help as many people as possible wake up every day feeling good that they're going to go out there and play great because of the single point swing. So one of the things that I think um, might be maybe really not talked about enough in teaching the swing, and especially when we talk about instructing the importance of the technical sides of the swing. You know, we always talk about grip. We always talk about the address position. We talk about the backswing, swing plane, and all these things that, you know, you can get very technical about the golf swing. But one of the things that I've discovered and that I, I put a lot into my instruction is can you actually finish a golf swing? In other words, can you get to your finish position? The finish position is the result of what happened before, and if you can get to the finish position, you can produce the speed and do the things with the body rotation and the motion that allow you to produce your maximum amount of speed and consistency and efficiency. But one of the things that I always deal with when I help somebody go from a conventional swing to a single plane swing is the lead knee position. Now in my book I talk about on page 124 you'll see and I, I talk about it numerous places in the book about the lead knee being in a in a flex position and that it, it, and, and I'm telling you what that's why this is a very different position than you see in a conventional swing motion. In conventional swing they often talk about straightening the leg. Now when you're in a single plane swing because you are starting the club on the same plane that you're impacting, you no longer need to lift the body. As a matter of fact, we want you to go slightly in a downward motion, a more stable position into impact. So now we have to talk about a different lead leg position. So let's go, let's go into this because I'm going to talk about the lead knee position and then how we finish the golf swing. And this is going to help you produce, you know, efficient speed, get you to the finish position and, and really build some consistency in your motion. Now, there's a couple things you have to discuss before we just talk about, hey, the lead knee needs to be flexed. In my book, I talk about it's like stepping into a shoe. But you'll notice, and once again, when I talk about stepping into the shoe, it was really a conversation about um, the feeling of what the knee feels like. So let's talk about what that feeling really is. If you step into your shoe, so let's say your shoe is sitting on the floor, and you go to step into it, look, look at what you do. Notice how your foot is slightly at an angle. So, because you're pushing forward, you're trying to stop the foot, stop the foot, and at the same time, brace the knee. Now, you'll notice that, and if you want to try this, I always try to, on my channel here, when I talk to you about the instruction, I try to give you things you can apply right now if you want to get out of your chair and give this a shot. But you can, but you can go ahead and look at that. You can see how it's a stable position. You wouldn't go step in your shoe and have a bent knee, right? You'd fall over. You wouldn't try to step into your shoe sideways, right? You wouldn't do that. You're going to step into the shoe at a forward position, like you're going to basically force towards your toe, which then bends the knee and stops your body. And you've got to stop the foot. See that? It's a stopping position. So that feeling, which, which I talk about in the book on, on that page, is the feeling that you're going to feel in the downswing in your transition. Now, this is why when I talk about swing mechanics, how each of the positions of the body, positions meaning how much rotation do you have in your foot, how much tilt do you have in your body, all the things when I talk positionally, positions matter greatly. And the reason they matter 
is because if you position your foot, let's say in this rotation, see it causes a different motion of the pelvis. If you position your foot too rotated, it causes more forward position. If you position the foot correctly, you can stop it and only move so far. It creates limitations. So this is why positioning of the body is, is very, very important to the motion of the golf swing. So now let's take this one step further and talk about, let's just walk up the lead leg here and let's talk about the position of the foot, the position of the knee and how it affects the rest of the swing. So notice that I want this foot to have a rotation to it. And that's the same reason I discussed is because when I transition into that knee, I want to stop the body. The key here in, in any motion, if I'm going to produce rotation and speed in my arms like this in the swing, I've got to stop this. How you stop it is very important because if the foot has a turn to it and the knee can flex slightly like I'm bracing it, stepping into the shoe, see that slight flex, then it stops. It stops the pelvis. Now, that doesn't mean this side stops. See, when I say stopping the pelvis, and this is where a lot of people, they kind of generalize too much, just because I stop this doesn't mean I stop this. See, this right side of my pelvis, see that? It can turn. Now, one of the things we used to do when we would watch Mo hit balls is, look, I had video cameras on Mo. We'd watch him practice. I'd watch Mo hit golf balls, and I would see certain things in his motion, and I would, and I would visualize... Uh, on video what I was looking for. One of the things we would see is watch the crease of my pants. See, I don't have any crease in my pants here, but watch when I do this. Do you see this big crease in my pants right across here? So watch that crease and get to a point where it's a stretch. See that stretch in my pants? So what that is, is the knee gets stable and the right hip rotates. See that? And then you see this kind of crease stretch out in my pants there. So that tells me that I have a, a stable pelvis and a rotated trail side, and that is where I get rotation. Now, why do I want the pelvis to rotate? And this is where a lot of people get confused, is they think, well, this is a lateral motion. It's not. It's a, it's a motion, a stabilization into the knee, and a rotation of the pelvis, because now I can now rotate my torso. Now, think of that, what I just said there. This, the rotated foot, the stable lead knee, and the rotation, those are all related to what? A rotated foot, a stable knee, and now I can rotate the body. So th these are the conversations you and I need to have about getting this right. One of the things that, in a recent conversation that I had with uh, somebody on the channel, was they were talking about how long is it gonna take to get this? And I gotta be completely honest with you, I don't like that question, and here's why. I can teach you this swing in one hour. If you grab that book and you do what's in that book, you can learn this swing just by the completion of the book. You stand up and you do it. You can learn this swing very quickly. You could have it in, in a day. But here's the real conversation is, yeah, you can learn the positions and mechanics overnight. Not hard to do. Can you make it a habit? That's up to you because are you going to practice? How are you going to practice? How much time are you going to do it? You got to build a skill. So the skill building is the question mark there, which I can never answer because I don't know you. I don't know how much you're gonna practice. I don't know how much time you're gonna spend on it. But literally, you can learn this overnight in a very short period of time. But to build it as a habit is another conversation. And that's about, by the way, this fall on this channel, I am going to cover the various forms of practice to master this golf swing. So stay tuned on this channel because I'm gonna cover a lot of this stuff over the next few months. Now let's take this lead knee one step further into the finish. Okay, so now that I have a stable lead knee, right? So now I'm, my foot's turned out, this, the knee is stable, and I'm still able to rotate my body, but I'm doing it around a, 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 a very well-positioned lead hip where it can't move a whole lot. It's, its limitation, its range has been limited. So now, as I rotate through, the upper body is able to rotate, and now the hands can release at the correct spot and time in the swing, which is right through here. So now, that's why I want that foot down, right? That foot heel on the ground because I don't want to over rotate. I don't want to stand up. I want to keep into the plane of rotation here with the body. Now watch what happens. The, the torso, because of side bend, the torso also gets to a point where it's like, hey, I have a range limitation, right? That is a limitation. That is a limitation. And now this is a limitation. Very important because the only thing left here is 
the arms and hands and shoulders can move. See that? So now I got the speed at the correct spot. Now it goes right to the finish position. So now what happens is I'm limited, lim limited, 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 release, finish. And look, because everything's been limited, this is the extent of the finish position. This is the range. This is where I finish, right there. That's as much as I can go. And then I stand up at the end. What I want you to notice about when I get to the finish is that it started with the lead knee position and it worked all the way into that finish position. So let me give you a little application here. Here's what I want you to do. And this is kind of something you can do. I always try to on my channel give you things you can apply and feel. What I want you to do is try this for me. Let's go ahead and just take your stance width and make sure you have your lead foot turned out just like that, just a little rotation in it. I want you to put your arms across your chest, tilt forward, and go into a slight side bend, which is away from the target. If you're right-handed or left-handed, it'll be away from the target. And then I want you to go ahead and just, just push your, step into a shoe for me, just step into the shoe and hold it, okay? So just hold your position. Now the key is holding it, all right? Because this is gonna be the transition of the swing. And now hold your knee in position, hold it there, okay? Keep it, don't let it move up or down, don't let it straighten, keep it right in position because that's the pelvis position. And now what I want you to do is I want you to rotate your torso into your finish and I want you to hold. And what you're gonna do, you're gonna, you're gonna see the crease of the pants, you're gonna feel the stretch. So I want you to work on that. I want you to do reps. I want you to do multiple reps of that motion there. Now, here's what it's doing. It's gonna open up your hips, it's creating stability, it's creating rotation, and it's developing the bottom of the golf swing position here for you. I don't know, you know, getting the address and grip, that's, I mean, I'm not saying it's easy, but that stuff's pretty simple because it's static. Hitting your positions in the backswing is going to be important. We'll talk more about that. But then getting to your stable finish position, because this is where the bottom of the golf swing is being produced from here through here. This may be one of the most important things you can spend time on. So that's your instruction for today. Thanks for joining, by the way. If you enjoy this content, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not a subscriber. And by the way, thank you again for making the single playing golf swing, one of the best selling books on Amazon.